So what we're trying to do here, and the reason I'm here, is to try to begin to bridge those gaps, try to bring the policy-making folks together with the data providers and begin an interaction so that the data providers are really providing what's needed. And so, and this is an important aspect of this, the policymakers really know what kind of data, data they need and when they need it. So that's kind of the forest. The reason I'm here specifically in terms of the trees is that we're very worried about the whole, there's the indicators are, are, are a very uh, sexy things these days. Everybody's talking about indicators. If you go into the work that's been done on indicators, both for social economic aspects and ecological aspects, there are hundreds of indicators out there. And we spent, and I've spent time working with it, with private foundations on developing sets of indicators. Once you spend all this time developing the indicator, nobody uses them in the decision-making process. Why? Because the decision-makers been, haven't been involved in the process of coming up with those indicators, getting back to that gap. And so we're trying to uh, work on the identification of a small set of indicators, much like the Dow Jones, that can be used globally to do comparative analyses of ecosystems, which is what you're going to have to do if you really want to understand how climate change is influencing ecosystems globally, marine ecosystems globally over time. And so the session that I organized focused on the kinds of indicators that are available and the approaches that we need to take to begin to bridge the gaps that I just talked about.